Hello friends, I am Chevy. Welcome to my shed and we're back to the normal setup. I haven't had this thing off the wall in a while. Does it still work? Hey, it still works. I built a little bracket to put it out of the way while I'm doing all this stuff. But anyway, uh, today I want to do... Whoa, that's the phone. Uh, let's turn the phone off. Okay. So a while back, uh, somebody had asked about um, why I have an LLC and asked me to explain it. And I was like, yeah, great idea. I'll put that on the list. I don't know who you are if you suggested that, but um, it's been on the list and I kind of forgot about it until yesterday I was on West Virginia subreddit and found a guy asking all these questions about, you know, LLCs. And so I thought I would make this video. Uh, so straight off the bat, let's get to some glamers. Let's let, it's not the button I wanted to hit. <laughs> let's get some disclaimers out of the way. Um, this video is for entertainment purposes only. <laughs> I am not, I repeat, I am not giving you legal advice and or tax advice and consider everything I say after this point to be false until you are told, uh, that it is true by a professional tax person or lawyer, okay? Just get that out of the way. I have an LLC. The reason I have an LLC is because four years ago, I think, I ran a Kickstarter. And so uh, just in case that blew up, I formed an LLC and opened up all the correct accounts for that business just to kind of shelter myself. So what is an LLC? Well, that's the thing. I live in West Virginia and LLCs are different for every state. An LLC is a state level company. It's not a federal thing. In fact, at the federal level, there is no difference between me as an individual and my LLC. And my LLC's earnings are reported on my personal tax reports, okay? That is for a single member LLC. So that's me. So in my state, there really isn't a big difference between like a sole proprietorship or a partnership or an LLC other than a filing fee, right? So uh, here in West Virginia, it's super easy. You go on the state secretary's website, fill out a form, pay a fee, you have an LLC. Assuming that the name isn't already taken uh, or that there's some other legal reason you can't have an LLC, you have an LLC. Just that simple. And uh, at least in my state, the way limited liability corporations or companies work is it protects the members of the company from personal litigation, assuming no, there was no gross misconduct on the members' parts. All right? Now, I'm a single member LLC. It means I, there's no other partners in my business. Uh, when you file, there's no articles in corporation. This isn't a corporation. So there's no articles in corporation. There's no board or anything like that. It's simply just a piece of paper that says I have an LLC. And it provides me a tiny fraction of uh, limited liability, as the name suggests. But that that's such a thin fraction that it's practically useless. And what I mean by that is, as a single member LLC, I am protected. The company shields me from from losing my house as long as gross negligence or willful negligence can't be proven. Now, if my LLC does something grossly negligent, negligent, it'd be really hard to say as the single member of that LLC that I, I wasn't me, right? That's kind of the whole idea. So it, it, it really doesn't provide me a whole lot of protection. Um, if I did something stupid under my LLC, I'm still personally liable for it. Now, if it was a multi-member LLC and it was, uh, there, there is some protection. But in reality, the reason that I did it was to set myself up in my state. I, uh, my LLC's taxes are separate from my taxes. My LLC pays business taxes uh, based on income and all that sort of stuff. At the federal level, doesn't matter. It all goes on my personal tax return. 
So what's the point of filing for the LLC? I, I'm really not sure. Um, having an LLC versus a sole proprietorship, there's that thin veil, that that idea that, that, that the company, the LLC, is its own thing. Yes and no. I mean, it kind of exists that way, right? So uh, my LLC, for instance, owns all of this equipment. My LLC owns the camera. This um, doesn't own any of my tools, but it owns the equipment that I use to film this. It owns uh, my computer equipment. It owns a little bit of inventory. I still have some stuff from like games from years past and stuff, but it doesn't own a whole lot. So if somebody were to sue me for something that I said or whatever, they could take my camera and my, you know, this stuff could be liquidated. Um, this stuff would be liquidated before any of my personal possessions. Let's put it that way. So there's that. Otherwise, it's more or less just a convenience. Like it, it's really, as far as the federal, as far as the IRS is concerned, they don't care if I have a piece of paper or not. If I do, if I, if you, so for instance, let, let me, let me rephrase that. My LLC is Chevy.LLC. Because I'm using my name at the federal level, they don't care if I have a state business license or not. Um, I could just say I'm Chevy Dodd Company, and the, the federal government's like, okay, that's fine. And they, you know, you can go get what's called a federal employer identification number as an individual. You can get that. It's essentially what you would pay taxes to the government with, or what you would pay employment taxes to the government with self-employment taxes uh, instead of your SSN. So, uh, okay. So that being said, if you do have a company that's not your name, then yeah, it is its own legal entity. Right now, my, me and my LLC are essentially twined. Uh, and there's that little veil of protection uh, that really... Yeah. It doesn't, it doesn't really do much for me. Uh, having the LLC, though, is a business license, so it does give me license to operate a business in West Virginia. So that's important uh, because if I want to sell products to an individual, then I have to charge uh, sales tax, and I have to report that. So I have to do that with my quarterly business report. Uh, my state sends me a thing, I fill it out, turn it back in. If I wanted to claim business to business sales, business to business sales traditionally aren't taxed. There's a that that is a whole area I'm not even get into. Uh, I have to have a business. I can't do that as an individual in my state. Say Chevy Dodd goes to work here, they could 1099 me and give me the thing, and if it's under a certain amount of money, then there's no whatever. But business to business, I could do infinite sales to them and not have to pay taxes on that, or not have to not have to charge them sales tax on that. So there's there's tax reasons to have an LLC. I'm not sure what they are. As a small, tiny business that makes a few thousand dollars a year, it's essentially uh, non-existent, right? I do not do consumer sales, so I don't have sales tax that I report. Uh, I just have to claim my income from this on my personal income. Now, that does mean that if I buy something like this microphone or this camera, uh, that offsets the income that I have to claim. So there's some balance there. Uh, but I could have just ran with it as Chevy Dodd, the individual. I could have gotten an EIN instead of using my social. I could have opened a second bank account. That's that company's bank account. That's where I keep my books. And it just, it would have been essentially the same thing. Just that tiny little veil of protection that the LLC supposedly gives. That's it. Um, I hope that helped. I hope that answers some questions. If you have more questions about the LLC, please put those in the comments below. And also, if you know more about it than I do, which I'm pretty sure most of you probably do, because I don't know a whole lot. This was a like maybe an hour's worth of internet research four years ago when I filled out, when I filled out my LLC. Um, again, let, let me know. And let me know how wrong I am in the comments below. I, I once heard that if you want an answer... Uh, on the internet, the easiest way to get it is to post the wrong answer. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> so here's the wrong answer. Tell me how to do it the right way in the comments below. Thank you guys for being here. As always, it is Wednesday. I am going to go play board games. Lignum is sitting right there. I can't wait to go try it. Also, uh, in case you feel like um, being spiritual or whatever it might be, 
my dad had open heart surgery today. Uh, in fact, that message was just from my mother and uh, the doctors are finishing up the surgery now. So he had open heart surgery to replace some valves. Um, hopefully he comes out of that okay. We'll see. He got some pig pieces, some pig valves put in his, in his heart. So I guess he's not going to eat bacon anymore. But uh, long recovery ahead. He's going to be in basically the ICU for three or four days. Can't go see him. Have to put on the masks and all that stuff because he essentially has no immune system for the next few days. Uh, hopefully his heart will, will, won't reject the pig valves and that sort of stuff. So if you feel like being spiritual, if you feel like sending well wishes, please do so. Uh, my dad is, uh, is a very cool dude and he's helped me so much, um, here and, and, and in the, in the world. So, um, yeah, hopefully I'll get him on the show. Eventually he did help me work on the bench and some other projects. I need to just have him on. But uh, thank you guys for being here as always. Thank you for being awesome friends. I'll see you tomorrow. Hey, Doc, wait. I want to ask you something. Today's random fact comes from PostGazette.com. Are deer colorblind? Deer are essentially red-green colorblind like some humans. Their color vision is limited to the short blue and middle green wavelength colors. As a result, deer likely can distinguish blue from red, but not green from red or orange from red. So camouflage... Uh, yeah. You could just wear orange. <laughs>